What is a penetration tester or ethical hacker in cybersecurity? In this video, you're gonna learn about the penetration tester or pen tester for short, or sometimes called ethical hacker career path in cybersecurity. So you're gonna learn about an overview of the role, what to expect. You'll learn some different job titles that you can search for online that can hopefully help you find the job you're looking for, as well as different job responsibilities, the average salary to expect, because some people think you're gonna make trillions of dollars starting out. Uh, I'm going to be the bearer of some bad news, but it's not such bad news that you, you you should be scared away from the career. You also learn about some of the tools you might use, as well as do you need certs or edu college education, or is this something that you can just kind of learn the skills for and then go get your first job? So pen testers or penetration testers or ethical hackers or whatever you actually want to use terminology-wise, the overarching goal here is to help an organization conduct security assessments to really find those exploitable vulnerabilities or the vulnerabilities that are likely to be exploitable for an attacker. The whole goal with that is to help the organization improve their security posture. Now, depending on where you work at, whether it's an internal team or you're working as a consultant capacity, the organization itself may say, yeah, we'll fix all that. And then you may find out that six months later or a year later, when you come back and do another assessment, they haven't fixed anything. And I've actually found that to be the case in a lot of organizations because a lot of compliance requires that organizations check the compliance checkbox, as we call it, at least once a year, usually semi-annually, so twice a year, to have a penetration test done. Doesn't mean they require them to fix anything. So just keep that in mind. But generally speaking, you're going to be doing these security assessments. And as part of that, you're going to be doing penetration testing as well as vulnerability assessments. So some of the other job titles you might search for online are ethical hacker, pen testing specialist, offensive security engineer, a vulnerability tester, web app security tester, security assessment analyst, and it, it breaks down from there. You can go into networking, et cetera. So you try different terms when you're searching for jobs online. Try like network security tester, web app security tester, application security tester, and oftentimes you'll find the jobs that nobody else is looking for because they're only searching for penetration tester. What are some of the job responsibilities that you want, might do? Well, you're going to be, as I mentioned, doing the security assessments. Now, that might be a variety of things. It could be the network, could be the overall infrastructure, could be apps, could be certain systems, could be the people using things like social engineering. Whatever the organization wants, essentially, is what you're going to be doing. So it, it really varies quite a bit based on the particular place you work and what the particular pen test, so the scope of engagement, as we call it, what, what's actually within that scope. The overarching goal, though, is to try to exploit vulnerabilities. Now, in the pen test scoping, it may list out that if you find vulnerabilities on system A, you cannot actually exploit them. So it might be against the scope, which if you go ahead and exploit those, it could potentially land you in jail or get lawsuits or whatever. So when we do penetration testing, we always have the paperwork in place with the scoping and understanding exactly what we can touch and what we can't touch. If that paperwork's not in place, you absolutely do not do a penetration test because you can likely go to jail and usually at a minimum, you're gonna get some kind of a lawsuit or fine. So in addition to those general security assessments, as part of that, you're trying to exploit those vulnerabilities, you do the vulnerability testing, exploit those. One of the key things of a pen tester, besides making sure the paperwork's in order at the front end before you start, is also make sure the paperwork's in order on the back end, reporting. You're gonna to have to report to a variety of stakeholders potentially across the organization. So you need to get really, really good at report writing. This includes things like making sure you've got screenshots where appropriate, making sure where you link re references as appropriate so they can learn more, making sure you have a very solid executive summary because most people are just going to read that in your pen test report and then the technical people are going to read the rest of it. So you want to be able to verify everything you found and, how, and the steps you did to do it and then also what are your recommendations for remediation. A lot of new pen testers I've met over the years and, and kind of mentored, they usually forget that last part of recommending good remediation. So you always want to make sure you do that as well, because what's the point in finding things if you don't fix them? For example, let's say you have a boat in the middle of the water, you're, you're out in the lake or the ocean, and you're going along and you find a leak, and then you find another leak and another leak in your boat. If you never work to patch those leaks, eventually your boat's going to sink. So it's like, what's the point of finding those leaks if you're not going to actually fix them? right? Because eventually your boat's going to sink. You might as well just jump out in the water and save yourself some time. So what about salary? Well, I, like I mentioned at the start of this video, some people think you'll make millions and trillions of dollars. Yes, you can make millions as a pen tester, usually only if you own your own consultancy. For the rest of everyone else that's going to work in corporate for most of your lives or all of your life, 
this is a starting base salary, generally, generally speaking, for a junior pen tester around the it's around the sixty-five to seventy thousand range, sometimes the seventy-five, and then as you go up, most cases you're going to be making above one thirty per year here in the U.S. as a, as a pen tester for base salary. Again, it varies a lot on, on where you go. Some places pay a little lower than others. In the government space, if you work for a consultancy that does like government, and you need a security clearance, you can usually make a lot more money for those types of pen testing engagements. In the UK, 55,000, 80,000 pounds. And then in India, 700,000 to 1.2 million rupees. So what are some of the common tools you might use? Well, Metasploit is one of the most common ones, along with Burpsploit, as well as Multego. And then some other ones are things like Nmap, uh, Nessus for vulnerability scanning, so password crackers, vulnerability scanners, social engineering uh, is, a, is not a tool, but a technique you might use. Now, there are some social engineering tools like GoFish for designing phishing emails. So you may use some things like that. And then custom tools. So as you evolve your career, you're going to find yourself oftentimes probably writing different security tools kind of on the fly based on the engagement. So that's where as you grow your career, you'll definitely want to pick up some coding skills, whether that's scripting with like Python or coding in like C or Go or something like that. So just understand that you don't have to be a coder to be a pen tester starting on. In fact, many people aren't. But it is something that you want to explore maybe a little later in your career once you've got some experience. You will also find if you talk to people at conferences, at security conferences, that some people have a job title as penetration tester, but they only do vulnerability scanning. They don't actually do exploitation of the vulnerabilities. So you can also find jobs out there where the job title is pen tester, but you don't even exploit the vulnerabilities that you actually find. What about education and certifications? Well, no college degree required. It's always helpful if you can afford one, but it's not required. Certs, not required. But again, if you can afford certifications, they're helpful. One of the best ones out there, at least right now when I'm filming this, is going to be TCM Security Practical Network Pen Penetration Tester, or PNPT. Um, reason I say it's one of the best ones out there, in my opinion, is because it's very hands-on. It doesn't focus on knowledge and testing, you know, can you answer A, B, C, or D? It's you've got to actually do a pen test and perform a write up, which most of these other ones don't actually have you do a report. So um, I really like that one. I recommend that one quite a bit. It's a newer certification, but definitely check it out. It's I think it's around three or four hundred dollars to get the training and the certification uh, U.S. dollars at the time of this filming. Another one that's popular is OSCP, but that's starting to wane and lose a little popularity over the years. For junior level pen testers, the EJPT, that's the e-learning security junior pen tester. You can find it on INE's website. Uh, that's another good one, a very popular one. The G-Pen, which is pretty expensive, but that's the GAIAX penetration tester. So if you're familiar with SANS Institute, that's one they offer. The LPT is a more senior level penetration tester cert, so that's one offered by EC Council. Uh, that one, you have to go through some different things like a background check and stuff for, and you have to have verifiable work experience. So that's a later stage one if you decide to get that. But if you do get that, you can usually command a very high salary because not many many people get that anymore. And then CEH, that's very, there's two versions. There's a knowledge-based one of the Certified Ethical Hacker, which is basically 125 qu quiz questions, essentially multiple choice. And then there's also a, a they call it a hands-on one. Uh, it's like a six hour pen test engagement that you do and you produce, I think, a little report, but it's very light compared to the PNPT as far as hands-on. So if you're looking for a hands-on start to get, I recommend EJPT or the PNPT. So key takeaways from this video, I want to stress that to be a good pen tester, you really want to have a background in IT or in another cybersecurity related role on the defensive side before you go to be a pen tester. Yes, you can go like from working at McDonald's and you can become a junior pen tester. It's totally possible people have done it, but you really need to understand how security functions across a enterprise and understand the intricacies, understand how to communicate with other stakeholders. And you don't learn that stuff in school. You don't learn that stuff in an online course or a book. So that's why I recommend you work in IT role or like networking, help desk, whatever, or you work in maybe software engineering or you work on, in a security role on the defensive side, like GRC or SOC analyst or something like that. Pen testing can have good compensation. Another thing, if you like change, it's constantly changing. There's always new threats. There's always new tools out there. In fact, there's, I mean, thousands of new tools a day written by people all over the world. And there's new types of attacks, the attack methods that our attackers are using. Uh, but again, a lot of the fundamentals that we've learned and defended against for years, they still work because people make mistakes.